So now we're going to use what's called definite integrals. And uh, definite integrals uh, are not, well, they're similar, but uh, to an indefinite integral. That's like a, the antiderivative, but it's called indefinite uh, because we're always using the unknown constant c that we have to tack on the end. Uh, but with the definite integrals, um, there is no unknown constant. What we're doing is we're basically finding uh, the area under a curve along a set interval um, on the x-axis. So looks like this. We have f of x dx uh, is going to be equal to uh, it's f at b minus uh, capital F at a. And it's important to note here that um, if we have f prime at x, um, capital F prime at x is going to equal f at x. So uh, we are basically solving for that. It's very similar to uh, the antiderivative problems, except we're going to be substituting in uh, the b value and the a value that we get, um, the a value being the further left extent of the interval and uh, that b value being the, the further right. And so anyways, um, and so we'll just find the antiderivative at each point, or we'll find the antiderivative and then substitute in these points and then subtract the two. Uh, another thing to mention that is important is that f of x has to be continuous on the interval uh, a comma b. So we'll see. It can't uh, it can't be discontinuous. So let's do a uh, let's do a quick example here. Let's take um, we want to find the area under the curve uh, on y. Let's say y is equal to x squared um, above the interval. Let's say zero two. All right, so let's draw this out, and we'll see what's happening here. Uh, so let's make a little coordinate axis, and like that. Okay, so basically we're going to have something that looks like this. One, two, three, four, one, two. Uh, so we're going to go up through this point, and then up to there. And it's going to go onwards, and it's going to go off in that way too. But we're interested in this area here. We'll just shade it. Let's the shade of blue. We want this area in here. All right. All right. There we go. So, what we're going to do is we are going to call. Well, this is two. Uh, this is zero, and this is one. So our b value will be two. Our zero value will be a. So let's draw this out. Um, we'll do it in blue. So we have uh, we'll have two on top and then zero. This is the way you write it. And then this is a y is equal to x squared. So we'll have um, x squared dx. Now this is going to be equal to, and what we have to do here is the same thing. We're taking the antiderivative of this. And so the antiderivative of this is we'll add one. So it'll be three uh, x, to the, uh, x to the cubed. And then if we go in reverse uh, to check this, uh, we'll bring the 3 down. So we're actually going to have to multiply this by 1 third, or divide it by 3. It's all the same. So, um, and though also what we want to do is we're taking it on this, uh, we're not adding C here, we're putting it in this interval. So the way you write it is like this, um, we're between 2 and 0. Okay, so now what we can do is we can write it like this. Basically what this is saying is uh, now we're going to substitute in here we did it up here at b minus a f at b minus f at b a capital f's uh, which is going to be equal to well it'll be one third times uh, two cubed minus uh, one third times zero cubed so we'll get um, let's just quickly work this through we'll just get this is equal to zero uh, minus zero, and this will be equal to two cubed is eight, uh, eight thirds minus zero is equal to eight thirds. So there we go. That's uh, this eight thirds is uh, the area under this uh, under this curve, uh, just in square units. Well, you know, if these were centimeters, this would be in centimeters. But uh, whatever units we're using, that's all you have to do to find the area under a curve. And let's do one more example. Then uh, we have some space down here that we can use. So what if we wanted to find the curve? Um, or find the area under the curve. Uh, how about let's do this one? Um, let's draw this out. If we want the uh, y is equal to sine of x, y is equal to sine of x, uh, I'll say this is 1, and 
this is pi. One, there we go. Okay, so we want to find the area uh, on the interval from zero to pi, and so it's going to look something like this, right? And then it's going to go off down that way, and so we want the area above the above the x-axis but below the curve. So we're going to do this in exactly the same way. We'll set it up like this. Um, pi will become our b value. This is the further right, and zero will be the the a value. So then we write this here: sine of x, uh, sine of x dx is going to be equal to. Now, again, we have square brackets, and then we'll have negative cos, uh, which is the antiderivative of sine of x. Negative cos of x. Um, Close the brackets and then we'll place our values here so we know what's going on. Uh, and this is if you take the derivative of negative cos of x, uh, well, that derivative of cos of x is negative sine x and the two negatives cancel out to get the positive. So there we go. Uh, now what we're going to do is we substitute in our pi uh, and we substitute in our zero and subtract the two. So we have negative cosine of pi uh, minus and then negative cosine at zero. When you punch this in your calculator, they come out really nice and we get, uh, this is just equal to two square units. Um, so that's it for now, we'll just leave it at the two examples. Uh, I'll probably make another video pretty soon uh, doing some more examples here. But uh, uh, that's it for now, and then we'll, we'll move on to areas between curves and all sorts of good things.